Sarah, you've taught in a bunch of different places. What countries have you taught again? Uh, quite a few. I've taught in Korea, Ecuador, Taiwan, Mexico, Japan, and the USA. Okay, so and you're China. Sorry. Oh wow! <laughs> so you're a language teacher. You've taught in all these amazing countries. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the languages first. Do you speak Japanese? I don't. I'm embarrassed. I've lived here six years, but I don't. How about you? Do you speak Japanese? I do speak Japanese. But oh, you it's do? Yeah, but it's not very good. Oh. People don't hear me say it that much because it's really bad, but I do speak Japanese, but it's bad. But what about the other languages? You lived in Korea. Did you study Korean? I did. I did study Korean, and I did learn to read very well. But now I've forgotten, so I can't speak it anymore. I heard that it's relatively easy to learn the alphabet in Korea. Yes, it is. Um, it's, it was invented by a scientist to be simple and easy to learn how to read. Oh, so wow. it is very easy. What about China? Did you learn Chinese? I didn't. I did study a lot, but in the end, I found it too difficult. Do you speak Chinese? I don't speak Chinese, but I lived in Thailand for five years, mm -hmm. and I do speak Thai. And I did study Thai when I was there, so yeah. Oh, wow. And it's tonal, so it's kind of similar mm -hmm. in some ways to Chinese. And can you read Thai? Uh, I can read Thai. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I do read Thai. So actually, my Thai reading is probably better than my Japanese. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's hard because in Thai, the, the words kind of stick together. Mm -hmm. Now, you were in Mexico and in Ecuador. Yes. So do you speak Spanish? I do speak Spanish. That was one of my goals for moving there was to become fluent. And I'm very happy now I can say I do speak Spanish. And your husband was with you. Does mm -hmm. he speak Spanish? Yeah, he does speak Spanish. He studied a lot and really improved a lot, so now he can say the same thing. He does speak Spanish. And your children? They do, too. They speak Spanish. Oh, nice. And your children are with you now in Japan. Mm -hmm. Do they speak Japanese? They don't. Um, they're learning very quickly. So I think they will improve, and in a couple of months... I can say that they can, but right now their Japanese is very low. Mm. So you were just in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Do you miss Mexico? I do miss Mexico. I miss the food the most. I miss the Spanish language, and I miss the music. How about you? Do you miss Thailand? I do miss Thailand a little bit, but not too much because I visit there a lot, so mm. it's not that it's not that big of a deal. I go there usually once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. But when I'm in Japan, I do miss it. I miss the food especially. Mm -hmm. Now, we both are outside of the U.S. We don't live in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Do you miss living in the U.S.? I do miss living in the U.S. I, I often miss that I understand and I know the culture so well. Sometimes in Japan, I feel like an outsider. And so I do miss being in the USA and being able to blend into the background to be just another person. Yeah. How about you? Do you miss the USA? I don't. You I don't? don't? I don't miss it at all. <gasps> so I visit it. Uh, I do miss my family, and mm -hmm. I do miss some things, especially like the food and the nature, but I don't miss actually living in America. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I go back so often. Mm -hmm. So these days it just doesn't seem like a big deal. Mm -hmm. Now, we are both in Japan. Uh, do you plan to teach somewhere else soon? I don't. I hope to stay in Japan for a couple of years. We we are relaxed. We are settled. The children are in school. I hope we can stay here. How about you? Are you going to stay? Or do you have plans to go? I do have plans to go, actually. And I want your old job. Really? <laughs> I want to work for the U.S. government, and I will let... I want to work in a different country. You should do it. I will. So, Sarah, you were a teacher for the State Department? Yes, that's right. I was with the English Language Fellows Program. Oh, wow. And where did you teach? I taught in Mexico. Oh, that's great. Wow. So, when you teach for the State Department, do they let you wear anything you want? Do you have to wear a suit or anything? 
They let you wear anything that is professional. You don't have to wear a suit, but you can't wear jeans. Okay. Do they let you teach anything you want? No, they don't let you teach anything you want. You you do have a lot of freedom, but they have some requirements. So you might have to teach university students beginning English, or you might have to teach um, university students engineering English. You have freedom how you're going to teach those subjects, but they don't let you choose the subjects. Okay. And when you work for the U.S. government, do they make you do a lot of paperwork? They do. They do make you do a lot of paperwork. When I applied for the job, it was the most difficult job application I'd ever done. They make you fill out a lot of forms and they make you ask your references to fill out a lot of forms too. And then when you do move to the country, they make you fill out even more forms for the work visa and the residency visa. Oh, wow. That sounds pretty harsh. It is, it's really difficult. They do try to help you with the forms, but the official rule is that they will only help the official employee. I traveled with my husband and three kids. They let me bring my family, but they didn't help me with the paperwork for my family. Oh, wow. So does the government help you get acclimated? For example, do they help you learn the language? Do they help you with moving costs? Do they help you uh, get acquainted with you know, the local culture? Mm -hmm. um, some of those are yes and some are no. They don't help you learn the local language. That is up to you individually. They do help you become acclimated to your town. They travel with you to your town. They make your host institution find you housing. So that's, that's really nice. They help you with the housing. They make your institution find you housing. And they let you have some time to get used to it before you're required to be working 40 hours a week. So you've worked for a university. Mm -hmm. You've worked for the U.S. government. Mm -hmm. uh, have you worked for language schools? I have. When I worked in Korea, I worked for an independent, privately owned language school, and we taught after-school lessons. So which, which did you prefer? Like, which ones did you like? Well, my favorite has been the university job because they let you, they let you choose your own hours. You have to teach the classes but if you don't have class, they let you plan your lessons from home or whatever time of day that you want to do it. I like that. But when I was working for the State Department, they made you work regular 9 to 5, Monday to Friday hours. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. They made you work those hours. I liked the private language school. It was a good job for me at the time, but they also make you work the hours that they need you, which is 2 to 7 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. And those are not the best hours to be working, so I, I didn't like that. But the language school helped me the most. They taught me language. They took me on trips. They really treated me like a part of the family in a way that the university and the State Department didn't. So that was a really a good memory, a good job. So if you could rank the jobs between mm -hmm. university, working for the U.S. government, and a language school, what would you rank one, two, three? Just exactly how you said it. University would be the top. The State Department would be very close, very close second. And then the language school would be a little farther, farther down. The pay was a lot lower. The hours were not very good. I didn't have freedom. 
They make you work more. <laughs> mm -hmm. Make you work more. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. That's awesome. Thanks. Thanks. So, Rachel, we're talking about how life used to be different for us when we were kids. Yes. And I was thinking the other day, it's interesting because we all have loving grandparents or parents, but our parents used to do things that they can't do anymore. For example, we used to ride in the back of my grandfather's pickup truck Yes. on the highway, which now is totally illegal. Yes. Like, it's a big no-no. And we would get in the back of his truck and he would drive us all over the place in this old pickup truck. And like today, that's against the law, right? We used to have a station wagon and there were six kids in our family. We just all piled into the back of the station wagon. No seat belts, no car seats. Right. Babies were in a little Moses basket on the back seat. Yeah. And people used to do things like... Um, and like, you know, also, like you said, uh, you know, let kids, you know, run around the back of the, of the station wagon or move around. You would strap things to your car <laughs> and drive down the street. Like sometimes you can't do that anymore or you have to do it. It's a little bit more regulated than before, I think. Right. Yeah. yeah. We also used to um, burn our trash, which is now a big no-no in California. Really? Yeah. We so, never used to do that. So really? I can't comment on that one. Yeah. So we had these big barrels and we would burn the trash. And you, if you watch movies, you'll see like in America, people like burning stuff in barrels to stay warm or whatever. And yes, then, I've seen that on movies. Yeah. And I remember one year, like my grandfather was like, oh, we can't do it anymore. They sent a letter and they said no more. No, no we more. used to go to the dump every week. Um, my father would um, load up the trailer. Or maybe every month or so. That's yeah. how we used to do it. We didn't we used to burn it. Right. Mm. I think they already had laws about it. Then. Really? You guys were ahead, you were probably ahead of the times. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Yeah, very green place. Also, uh, for having children, like women used to drink a little bit or they used to smoke when they were pregnant, right? Yes, that was a big thing, especially yeah, smoking to stay slim. While you were in pregnancy, so you wouldn't get too fat. <laughs> really? <People, we're, laughs> that was, why, that was a lot, why a lot of women smoked. It's really? A, it's a diet thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I did not know that. Mm. Wow, different times, huh? Yeah, and the baby was born smaller, but that wasn't considered necessarily a problem. Wow. And, they, mm. and not only that, they used to have commercials about cigarettes, and they would have commercials about drinking. I guess they still have commercials about alcohol. Mm. But, yeah, they used to have commercials about smoking, and I think that's illegal in the States now. You it's can't... illegal in New Zealand, too. Yeah, I haven't seen. Yeah, it's been a while, right? Yeah. The magazines, used, the newspapers used to be full of them. Yeah. And they used to uh, not have to say, like, what all the ingredients were in foods and stuff, right? So these days, like, you have to say exactly what's in the food, mm -hmm. I think. Well, my mother and grandmother used to cook most things from scratch anyway, so there weren't many packets or cans of anything right? at all. Yeah. <laughs> no instant food or instant cakes. So they used to cook everything from fresh ingredients, so we knew what was in stuff. We did too. On our farm, my grandparents' farm, they grew their own vegetables, and we used to can them. Yes, we used to do that too. Yeah, although it was vegetables funny because... Vegetables and fruit and potatoes every year. Right, and it's funny because you call it canning, but it's actually you put it in a jar. Jars, yes. Right? When you're doing it at home, you use jars, yes. <laughs> you don't call it jarring, but actually I, don't, I never remember putting it in a can. We called it preserving. Though. Preserving, yeah. yeah. I hated that. Uh, we would do that all day for, or usually all weekend, and I dreaded that weekend. That yeah. was the worst because, you know. I didn't mind it so much. Oh, really? Yeah, we, oh. Kids, we didn't have to do too much, but we used to like to um, pick the peels. Yeah. Or, yeah, or the stones, or we'd get lots of nice bits of fruit. Oh, that's good. No, they, my grandparents put us to work, and it was two days that I could not have fun, any fun, from sun up to sundown, and I dreaded it every year. Like, oh no, it's canning weekend. Oh no. I didn't like the potato harvest, though. Oh, really? I didn't like having to go and take care of the potatoes. So did your your family had a potato we didn't ranch? Have a farm, but my we used to farm plant potato a potato patch at my uncle's farm. All right. So we would go there and we would weed it and we would plant it and we would harvest it every year. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we just grew like green beans and carrots, tomatoes, that type of stuff. We used um, to have a vegetable garden at, at, at our house mm -hmm. in, in the backyard of our home. 
So we had apples and lemons and pijoas and gooseberries and grapes and gooseberries. Yeah. What's that? Gooseberries are little green, um, very sour berry. They make great pies. Really? Yeah. Gooseberries. How do you spell goose, it? Goose. Like goose. Oh, gooseberries. Yes. Sorry, that's my pronunciation. <laughs> my poor pronunciation. Listening there. Um, oh, gooseberries. Oh, cool. What do they taste like? Gooseberries. Very sour, like a raw lemon, maybe. Okay. Mm. Oh, or cool. Raw rhubarb. If you've ever tried that, I just add that. Rhubarb. I was not a fan of rhubarb. Rhubarb was one of the things I dreaded as a kid. Was the rhubarb pie. Oh, I loved it. Really? I used to eat it um, raw out of the garden. Oh. We would play in the back garden. We had a trampoline, and the vegetable garden was there, and we used to pick the raw gooseberries or the raw rhubarb beans or carrots. <laughs> <laughs> Afternoon snack was very healthy in those days. So rhubarb is healthy? <laughs> it's a vegetable. Yeah, I don't... Not quite so healthy once you add cups and cups of sugar to it, but yeah. and the leaves are, are toxic. So you have to be careful with it. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't like the rhubarb, and I didn't like beets. Those were the two that beetroot, I hated. Beetroot, beetroot. Yeah. yeah. And they always make you eat it. Can preserve at, that as well. Yeah, you'd have the the canned cr cranberry, whatever, and also the beetroots, and those beetroot. two things were not my favorites. I love beetroot on a hamburger. Oh, yeah? Yep. Oh, well, there you go. That's very healthy. It's purple, mm. one of the few purple foods, right? Mm. Purple or reddish. Is it it's purple reddish, or red? Really. It's really reddish. Yeah. Kind of a deep, dark blood mm. red, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the good old days growing up on the farm. The things that the, we used to do, we can't do anymore. So, Duran, what did you do last Valentine's Day? Last Valentine's Day, I got disappointed, I think, because um, I teach at uh -huh. a at university, and I'd heard that uh, Japanese students always give their teachers loads and loads of chocolate. And even though it was like my fifth year, and every other year I'd only got like two or three, I was still really excited because I'm at university now and uh -huh. uh, got two chocolate bars. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. How about you? You looking forward to it this year? Um, I'm planning on going to Korea with my coworkers to escape the Valentine's Day. To escape? Atmosphere, yes. You're not a fan then? Um, I like Valentine's Day, but I don't plan on celebrating it this year. Is uh, Valentine's Day big in England? Uh, I haven't lived in England for a while now, about 10 years. Um, when I was a kid, it was big in school, like in, in junior school. Yeah. We used to have a little Valentine's post box in your class where you could write little messages to your classmates and then you put it in a box and they'd get delivered. Oh, in a box? Yeah, a little Valentine's post box. Oh, cool. And your teacher would deliver them. Did um, you only get notes or did you get candy as well? No, it was just notes. In England, we don't really give candy and chocolate and presents to people. We just yeah. give letters, unless it's like a boyfriend or a girlfriend or something. Yeah. But when you're seven, you don't really bother. Well, the thing I liked about Valentine's Day as a kid was that you'd get Valentine's Day cards from everyone, mm -hmm. but I was always curious to see what the boy I liked wrote to me. Did you know who wrote what to you? Yeah, like they would sign their name on the card. What? They sign names? Yeah. Be like, Happy Valentine's Day, Adam. No, in England, I don't think you usually, you don't put your name. Even if you know who it's from, you know it's from your girlfriend or your best friend or your grandma or something. Yeah? You just, I think you just put a big question mark. Really? It's half the fun. You have to figure it out. But my favorite Valentine's Day gift is always from my mom. She, she gives you a gift every year? Yeah. She'll send me gifts in the mail. And when I was in elementary school, she would hide chocolates and stuff in my desk. <laughs> it's awesome. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. I don't I don't remember getting any really, really cool Valentine's presents. I remember giving a couple. I was, I was dating a girl who lived in Norway when I was at university in England. And so f for Valentine's Day, it was the same... I think her birthday was like February the 11th or something. Oh, yeah. So I just flew over. I emailed like her best friend who I knew quite well as well. And he picked me up at the airport and I flew over to Norway. Yeah. And in Norway, it's a very safe country. So they don't really lock their doors, a bit like Japan. And I just he drove me to the house and I walked in at like nine in the morning. And <laughs> she came downstairs and she nearly died. She, <laughs> she, she thought I was a ghost. Yeah, and that would be scary, but yeah. fun. Scary, but fun. That's what she said when, when she could talk. Yeah. So it was a double birthday, Valentine's Day gift? Exactly. Awesome. Exactly. So Todd, where are you from? I am from the US. I am from San Francisco. It's on the West Coast. And what do you do? I'm an English teacher. 
Also, I create Ello. So I work on Ello a lot. Okay. How old are you? I am 47. Yeah, I am old. <laughs> no, it's not old. Uh, who is your best friend? My best friend is Don. He is a teacher too. He lives in America. And are you married? No, I am not married. I am still single. Where is your mom from? My mom is from California. She is from Los Angeles. And what does she do? She is a manager. She works in a clothing store. Uh, where is your dad from? My dad is from San Francisco. He is not from Los Angeles, um, but he met my mother in Los Angeles. Mm. And what does he do? Uh, he is also a manager. He works for a tree cutting company. They cut trees. Wow. That sounds yeah. exciting. Yeah, cool job. Is it dangerous? It is a little dangerous, a little. And Amy, what about you? Where are you from? I'm from Glasgow, on the west coast of Scotland, in the United Kingdom. Nice. And what do you do? I'm also a teacher. Nice. What yeah. do you teach? Uh, I teach English. Ah, uh, me too. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? It is. It is very fun. Um, excuse me, can I ask, mm -hmm. how old are you? Of course you can ask. I'm 34. Okay. Very young. <laughs> very young. Uh, where is your mom from? My mom is also from Glasgow. Ah, nice. Yeah. What does she do? Well, she's retired now, but she was a nurse. Oh, nice. And is your dad from Glasgow? Yes, he is. What does he do? He's also retired, but he used to be a teacher. Oh, wow. Many teachers. Yes. <laughs> uh, looks like it. <laughs> well, thanks, Amy. Nice talking to you. You too, Todd. So, Darcy, let's talk about our dream life. Where would you like to live? I want to live by the beach. Oh, that would be nice. Yes, I want to live somewhere that I can see nature and hear the ocean waves. I want to be able to go outside um, and just get away from things. That's nice. How about you? Well, I love the beach, um, and I like to go to the beach a lot. But I, I'd like to live in the mountains. Uh, I want to live uh, in a forest or around a lot of trees. I love trees, and I like to go hiking. So I want to live where... It's very rural, um, but not far from a city, mm. and I can go hiking a lot. So, And I want to have a dog, because if I have a dog, I can take the dog walking with me. That would be really nice. I want to live somewhere that's kind of suburban, um, close to a city, but quiet. But also, I want to have a home that has a yard, and I don't need a fence. Yeah. But I would like to be nearby neighbors. And where people are friendly mm -hmm. um, instead of kind of too tight together or too spread apart. Right. What about uh, transportation? Any type of car? Like, What type of car would you like to have? Um, I think I would like to have a chauffeur. <laughs> really? A driver? You'd <laughs> yes. like to have a driver? <laughs> because I don't have my license yet. Oh, I see. So I want to get a license. I want to learn how to drive. But if I can't, it would be convenient if I would have a chauffeur to drive me around. Oh, wow. How long, what about you? Like, how do you like getting around? Well, actually, I'd like to have a car, a nice car, uh, maybe an all-terrain Mercedes-Benz or BMW. That would oh. be nice. But I want to drive myself. I do not want to have a chauffeur. So I like <laughs> to be by myself. I like to relax. I don't want to talk to somebody in the car. <laughs> Uh, I want to be alone, so yeah, that's definitely not going to happen. But I'd like to have a car that looks nice in the city, but you can take out in nature. It's a little rugged, mm. so that would be good. I, I don't want to have a small car. I don't want to have a sports car, and I don't want to have a car that's really expensive. Mm. So, like, 
I guess a Mercedes all-terrain car is expensive, but I mean, I don't want to have a car like a Ferrari or something or a mm-hmm. Porsche that if I make a mistake, then it's going to be really expensive. Mm. So, Yeah, I don't have a car license, but I have a scooter license. So I want to get a nicer scooter that's like pink and white, and I would like it to have lights underneath the bottom, something shiny, and I want it to have a stereo, and I play music while I drive down the streets. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Do you want people to hear your music when you go by? I just want to hear my music when I'm driving. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Okay. Uh, So how about travel? So where would you like to go? Um, I would like to go to Ireland because my family's from there. So I would like to see where my, um, my ancestors used to live and I would like to try the cuisine and I would really like to learn Gaelic. Um, it's not really spoken in the world, but I think that's really nice to, to learn about my history and to pass that on even though I don't live there. Oh, nice. That's cool. So what about you? Where would you like to go? Uh, that's pretty easy. Well, I shouldn't say easy. I have two choices. I'd love to go to Africa, and I'd love to go to South America, just because I haven't been to either place. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to travel around Africa. I've met many students at my university from Africa, and they're so nice. And uh, that would be cool. Um, I'd like to go to um, everywhere. Actually, I'd like to go to Somalia. I'd like to go to Ethiopia. I'd like to go to Nigeria. Um, I'd like to go to Tanzania. I'd like to go to Botswana. <laughs> I've met students from these places, and they're so nice. Um, also, I'd like to go to South America. Uh, just It looks cool, mm. and I'd like to learn Spanish. I don't know any Spanish, but I want to learn. So And Portuguese. They speak Portuguese <laughs> in Brazil, so that would be fun. Sounds like you just want to travel around the world, kind I of. I do, kind of, but I like teaching. So actually – That leads us to the next question. What is your dream job or what would you like to do as a professional? So I'll go first. I want to teach English in South America. Mm. Um, I'd like to teach English in maybe Chile or Argentina Mm. or maybe Brazil or Colombia. I have friends that taught in those places and they all say it's really nice. Yeah, like I just want to be a teacher um, or something with teaching or I want to do some type of mentoring. So I like traveling too. So I would like to go to maybe Korea um, or France or Italy, some European country, because I want to go somewhere new and have a new experience. Um, But I'm also interested in the mentoring. So I think it'd be really great. I really want to do TED Talks. All right. So I want to get more experience so that way I have something that I can share with other people and, you know, travel around the world. Oh, that's nice. And talk to different people. That's so cool. (laughs) So what about things you would like to learn or a skill you would like to develop? I want to learn how to play the guitar. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah, I really like writing poetry, so I think it would be cool if I learned how to play my own music. I want to be able to sing and to play guitar and perform and entertain people. And I want to kind of form that connection that music does that we can't necessarily do just talking with each other. Yeah. That's a, that's a nice one. So what about you? Do you have any skills you want to learn? Yeah. The two basics. Uh, One, I'd like to learn how to surf. Ooh. I want to start surfing. I would love that. And also, I'd like to get a motorcycle and learn how to ride a bike around and take, like, a long motorcycle trip. I've done the scooter. I've done some dirt bike riding, and I've done some motorbike riding in countries where I kind of lied and said I had a license, and I didn't. (laughs) (laughs) But I'd like to make it official, go get a motorcycle license. So we should make a pact. I'll get my motorcycle license, and you'll get your driver's license. Okay. It's a race. Okay, you might win. (laughs) Okay, Katie. Yeah. Let's take an international test. Oh, okay. How international are you? Let's find out. Let's find out. Okay, first, have you ever eaten Greek food? Greek food. Uh, I've eaten, how do you say it, fafalo? Oh, is that Greek? I think so. Okay. I've had that, but apart from that, I've never eaten Greek food. Okay. How about you? you? Have you? Uh, I think I have. Well, I've. 
I've eaten Greek yogurt. Does that, that count? That counts. That counts. That counts. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever eaten Russian food? Mm, what's Russian food? I think like Russian food, like is it borscht? Borscht is like a soup, a cabbage soup. Mm, I've I've never eaten Russian food. Yeah, maybe I haven't eaten Russian food either. Mm. Mm. Okay, last one. Have you ever eaten Vietnamese food? Ah, uh, I I see it written down. It's is it pho? Pho, the noodles. Yeah, I've eaten pho before. Yeah, I've been to Vietnam, so I've eaten Vietnamese food a lot. And pho, the noodles, is really good. It's yeah, it's delicious. I've had that too. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about languages. Oh, okay. Have you ever studied French? I have. I've studied French for five years. Ooh, can you still speak French? Nope. Not at all. Yeah, me too. I <laughs> I once studied French years ago, but I haven't spoken French in so long. Mm. I can't remember anything. I can't remember anything either. Yeah. Have you ever studied an Asian language? Um, I've studied Japanese. Ooh, okay. I can still speak it a little bit now. And I studied a little bit of Korean, but I don't speak Korean. Oh, really? Mm. Okay. Wow, like... I've studied uh, Thai. Okay. Because I lived in Thailand for five years, and like you, I've studied Japanese, but my Japanese is terrible. How about your Thai? My Thai is okay. Uh, it's okay. I can talk a little bit. Hmm. Okay. So, have you ever met a Spanish person? A Spanish person? Actually, I don't think I have. Really? I don't think I have met a Spanish person. Oh, interesting. I've been to Spain, so I've met a few. And we have a Spanish teacher at my school. Oh, maybe I have met a Spanish person then. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe okay. I've met a secret Spanish person. Okay, have you met a Chinese person? Oh, yes. I've met lots of Chinese people. Okay. And have you met a Brazilian person? I feel like if I say no, then I have... Probably. I've probably met a Brazilian person. Yeah, I've met a few people from Brazil, so they're always very nice, mm. very friendly people. Mm. So, Meg, are you busy this weekend? Yes, I'm so busy because I'm moving. Oh, no. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do. What do you have to do? First, I have to prepare my apartment, so I need to pack all of my things. That's not fun. No, it takes a long time. Do you need help? Yeah. Do you have time to help me? I can help you on Sunday. Oh, are you busy on Saturday? Yeah, on Saturday I have to work. Uh -huh. I have to teach two classes. And then after I teach, I have to grade papers. Um, uh, it sounds like you're really busy too. Yeah. Plus, I have to meet my friends that evening. Oh, what I, will you do with your friends? I'm helping my friend also. My friend has car problems. So, I have to take him to the mechanic. Ah. Uh, but so on Sunday, later. I can help you. Okay, that would be great because on Sunday... I have to take some trash to the dump, and I have to finish some paperwork at City Hall to prepare for moving to a new country. Oh. Now, because you're moving, do you have to go to the post office? I do have to go to the post office. I almost forgot. At the post office... I have to submit a form to say my new address. Ah, that's good because I have to go to the post office too. Oh, really? I have to send my mom's birthday gift to her. When is your mom's birthday? It was one month ago. Ah, so you have to send it quickly. Yes, I have to get on it. Okay, well, let's go together. So I'll see you Sunday. What time should I be here? I have to go to City Hall by 3 p.m., so can you come at 2? Okay, but if you want to go to the dump, the dump closes at noon, so we have to leave earlier. Ah, uh, okay. 
Can you come at 11? Yes. Okay, so I will see you at 11 o'clock. Great. See you then. Bye. Bye. So, Sarah, let's talk about things we do、mm-hmm. under certain situations. Okay. So, when you are stressed、mm-hmm. with a lot of work, what do you do? I always do the same thing. If I'm stressed, I clean. Really? Yes. <laughs>、um, if I feel、um, anxious or stress or I'm worried, I always clean. I usually clean the house or wash the dishes, and I feel better because I'm, I'm busy and I'm accomplishing something. So if I'm stressed, I clean. If I clean, I feel better. Oh, that's great. How about you? What do you do if you feel stressed? If I'm stressed, I exercise.、Mm-hmm. So、uh, when I exercise, I always feel better.、Mm-hmm. So if the weather is nice, I'll go jogging outside. And if the weather is cold or if it is raining,、mm-hmm. then I go to the gym. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, and I always feel better. So if I exercise for like one hour or two hours, my stress just goes away. Oh, that's great. So, what do you do if you have really low energy? To be honest, if I have low energy, I sleep. Yeah. I, I always try to. Take a nap on the weekend. It's a little difficult because I have young kids, but if I put a movie on, then I can have a break. I can take a rest. Right. I can take a nap. What do you do if you feel tired?、Uh, well, if I'm just really sleepy,、mm-hmm. of course I sleep.、Um, but if I have low energy,、mm-hmm. I eat vegetables. So, I make a salad or I eat just vegetables raw, like a raw carrot or celery、mm-hmm. or something like that.、Um, I, find I, I find that when I eat vegetables, I get a really big energy boost.、Mm-hmm. Um, but surprisingly, fruit does not work.、Uh-huh. I think maybe because of the sugar in fruit, like fruit makes me sleepy. So, if I eat a banana or an apple sometimes, I don't feel more energetic.、Mm-hmm. But vegetables always. That's a really healthy response.、Yeah. Sometimes people think, oh, if I'm tired, I'll drink coffee, I'll drink an energy drink. But vegetables is a much better choice. Yes,、yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to top vegetables. Okay, how, what do you do when you are bored? You're really bored. What's something you like to do to pass the time? If I'm bored, I love to listen to something. And I have. Three things I like to listen to. If I'm walking or running, I like to listen to music. If I'm cleaning the house, I listen to a podcast. Or if I'm just resting, I listen to a book, an audiobook. So, what do you do?、Uh, similar to you, I will find something to read. Or,、uh, or maybe watch on TV.、Mm-hmm. Um, so, if there's a sports game on,、mm-hmm. I'll watch sports.、Um, if there's nothing on the TV related to sports, then usually I'll surf the channels on TV and hope that I find something that's a documentary or informative.、Mm-hmm. I don't like to watch dramas, I don't like to watch like, TV shows or movies and stuff like that.、Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes I'll read, but I find that when I'm bored, for some reason, I don't want to read. Uh, sometimes I feel the same way. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but like, maybe because it's,、like、it's just work.、Maybe. Okay, so what do you do when you get really upset and you need to calm down? Like somebody makes you angry, what do you do? Oh, I, when I'm upset, I leave. I don't want to shout or be angry. Or say something mean. So when I feel myself becoming angry, I immediately leave. And later, when I'm calm, I, I try to solve the problem, talk to the person, fix the situation. But my first response is leave. How about you? What do you do if you feel upset or angry? That's so interesting you say that because we're complete opposites. Really? So if somebody makes me angry, I confront them right then and there.、Mm. 
So I actually blow my top sometimes mm -hmm. and I get angry back at them. Uh, like for example, with my students, sometimes I have a short fuse with my students. So I mm -hmm. might get really angry with my students, but it's very short lived. Mm -hmm. And I find that it's, it's better. So if I release my energy, then I'm not dwelling on it. I don't let the anger continue and it's mm -hmm. over. It's gone. And mm -hmm. then I can move on. I'm at peace. And sometimes I apologize right away. Uh -huh. I'll say, oh, I'm sorry. I lost my temper. I shouldn't have done that. But I'm the opposite of you. If I walk away, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, it's the worst. It'll build and build and build oh. and make me really upset. Yeah. So it's better that I get my emotions out right away. I see. So when you walk away, you feel more and more angry. And when I walk away, I feel more and more calm and relaxed. Oh, totally. I They have a phrase like stew on it. So I mm -hmm. stew on it. Totally. Ah. And uh, yeah, it's not healthy. Sometimes there's a situation where I can't leave. Like I can't leave in the middle of class. So if I feel myself in class getting angry, I try to fix the problem before I become really angry. So I try to notice, how do I feel right now? If I feel a little angry, I'm going to talk to the student. I'm going to fix the problem now. I won't wait until I become really angry. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Huh. I guess we're all different in, the, in our own little way. Yeah. 